Hi everyone, my name is Maxine Mackey and I work as an innovation and strategy consultant with IBM. And what that really means is I help my clients on a daily basis come up with new ideas for products, create new customer experiences and the strategies to enable them. Um, I've had the pleasure of working on some awesome pro projects with clients as diverse as, I don't know, like automotives, travel and transport, retailers and financial services. And what I actually do in my, my day job is what we're all doing today. Everything from creating a vision, understanding the roadmap, understanding user profiles. This isn't something that um, Chamberlain set up for everybody here to do um, and it's just for kind of entrepreneurs. This is the tools that everybody uses. And I hope that makes you kind of uh, realize the value in, in what we're doing here today. I'm here today to talk about iterating your strategy because, as Pia said, you can be, um, you're climbing a mountain, but it's not going to be a linear process. So, when we say iterating your strategy, what does that really mean? Strategy isn't planning. This isn't a planning exercise at all. It's a way in which you can look at what you want to achieve. You can build on the vision you already have, that vision that is either written in your mirror that you see every day in the morning or is a post-it on your laptop at work. It's pulling that together with customer insight and what you actually want to achieve. And by having this roadmap, it helps you align everything you're doing. It also crucially helps you decide what not to do. You will have a finite amount of time and resources. And what strategy does, and by iterating it and learning as you go, it helps you decide what to allocate your precious time and money and resource on. So I think it's a really important thing because we won't get it right the first time. And I don't think that's something that we would want to aspire to because it's about the learnings you go along the way that help kind of this living, breathing roadmap and strategy. The only constant is change. Have you guys heard this or does anybody tell themselves this at all? Cool. It's because that's the reality of the world that we live in. So you may develop a roadmap, but you may actually find out that people don't use your product the way you thought they would. It's not selling the way you thought it would. Um, you may have a, a fast follower in the marketplace, which is a bit of an ankle biter in your territory. And the, oh, this is true for all of us, that we live in a constant changing environment, whether it's technology, um, as I said, around competitors. And it's about having an open mindset to embrace this change, it's really important to be adaptable, but it's also really difficult. I know I've spent time working on projects and it's exactly the same as everyone in this room, building your idea, building your business, and you think you've, you know, you think you've cracked it, you've been like, yep, I've got it, this is awesome, I created this product that people are going to love, I love this, all my friends and family who I've shared it with love it. But the reality is people don't engage with it in the way that you thought they would. Or maybe people aren't having the same experience as you're, you're having. So it's about embracing what other people are saying in order to help you um, pivot on what you're going to do. Now, I know Amber's going to tell us a little bit later about what it's like to pivot your business. But um, I also want to appreciate the fact that sometimes when we're living in a constantly changing marketplace, it's both really exciting but it's also really difficult because these ideas that are our babies sometimes, you know, are, are change dramatically. And I think a really important thing to bear in mind when we're kind of a, being mindful of the only constant is change. It's something actually that um, this is something I grew up with. It's attitude is everything. And I think that's really important when you're climbing your mountain, when you're building your product, and you're living in this constantly changing marketplace. It's about having you know, a really positive attitude. People have touched on this earlier. And I just wanted to take a moment to say, attitude is everything. You should be enjoying what you're doing. Of course, you'll have days where it's a bit shit and you're really struggling. Um, and that's why the network of people you meet, women and men that are also kind of on this journey of building their business is really important. Enjoy what you're doing and embrace the change. Um, but embracing the change is one thing, but be mindful of your role. Innovators innovate, 
customers validate. You'll find, I would be very surprised if anybody here today was doing a um, customer insight survey or just um, understanding customer feedback and that they learned something about their product or their industry that was just completely transformative. That's because the reality is most customers, um, they can provide you with really great feedback, but it's actually really hard to imagine um, a reality that's very different from today's reality. So if you're providing a new service, a new product, or a new experience, it's actually quite difficult for your customers to typically, at least, um, give you ideas. But what they can do is validate what you're doing. And I think that feedback is really interesting and, you know, enjoy those surprises you learn along the way. Um, and remember that attitude is everything because it's sometimes quite difficult what they're saying and what you're hearing. But remember your place. It's your idea and you have your vision. And we've already talked about how important that vision is because your vision shouldn't really change. Like you may morph it, but even when Perry talked earlier, she, she said that her vision had never changed despite the business model and, uh, and all the strategies she would have had to put in place to, to make each of those business models work. So enjoy the surprises you kind of uh, um, learn along the way. And my last point on this is, um, this is where the Henry Ford, the really famous Henry Ford quote comes from. If I asked my customers what they would have wanted, they would have said faster horses and not cars. So just be mindful of that and, and kind of a keep true to your vision and, and confidence in, in what you want to do. But even with all the confidence in the world, you need to have an innovator's mindset to help you know when to and how to iterate your strategy. And this strategy should be living and breathing. So your mindset, what's important? Well, questioning things, questioning what your customers are saying, questioning um, what suppliers are saying, what are everybody around you, what are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you observing in people's behavior? Are people you using your products differently than you thought? Is the way they, um, if you had thought it would have been um, a strong subscription model, you might create a skincare company and expect people to rebuy stuff like every month or like a new kind of a hair conditioner or something. If they're not, okay, that's interesting. That gives you something to think about. Networking, and today is like a great example. In this innovator's mindset, you want to be kind of engaging with other people. Sharma Dean talked earlier about the network of women around her that have been. Um, key and pivotal in the success in all the breakout workshops of today. That's her network. Today, the people sitting near you, they could be yours. But I'd urge you to have a network and exploit it. Talk to each other. Because you may have very different products or similar ones, but it's you'll have similar experiences hiring people, firing people, understanding like what partners to bring in, when to get support for when you just have no time. And the next thing in this, this kind of a, um, innovator's kind of mindset is to experiment. So that's trying new things with your, with your products and just having um, an open mind to try different things so you can test out. Are people actually, um, would they buy more if we changed and, and tweaked the product slightly? Um, and just having that mindset to constantly change and just be, be aware of um, changes both in the marketplace and what customers want. All these things do, all these kind of mindset stuff, all it does is give you insight. And everybody today who is like a future female CEO, and I hope you all are, um, you have the difficult position to be doing the actions from this insight. It's up to you and it rests on your shoulders to kind of figure out from all these insights around what your customers are saying and doing um, and the people around you. Um, it, that the Insights really only help you make actions and that's decisions you have to do. And that might pivot on your strategy or it might actually um, give you confidence in what you're doing and um, help you understand that you're on the right path. And that's not something that can only come from gut feel. That's something I would suggest comes from like data and metrics and numbers. I want to urge you to spread your risk. Now, behind me are two illustrations. And what they're really demonstrating is two different ways of building your business. So in the first example at the top, 
your, um, well, for both of them, you're helping um, this business idea, say, is getting customers from A to B. Now, the first step, you have a wheel. That's not really much good if I want to get from A to B, and A to B unless like I've got major acrobatic skills. Then you build a car chassis, still really not that useful. Then you build the body of the car. Again, customers can't use it. And then finally, you build the car, and customers can then get from A to B. Now, the example below is also helping customers get from A to B. But in the first step, it's building a skateboard. I mean, you can still travel on a skateboard. skateboard. I mean, you might not be going that far or fast, um, depending on how much of a thrill seeker you are. Then you have a scooter, a bike, a motorbike, and then finally a car. And what this really means is um, it's an approach to ha help you um, kind of a spread your risk. And we mentioned that a little bit earlier around how a roadmap is really important for you to reach that goal of profit and also kind of a hedge your risks. So for both of the examples I kind of showed you earlier, um, they both have the same cost. But in the first example, you have absolutely no value until you've completely finished your product development and you can sell a, a, sell a, a product like the car. So that means as much money as you're spending, you are just assuming more and more risk. Um, and I would say don't try and like get it all right at the beginning and wait until the product is, is launched ready, has a, you know, a lovely box and a gold bow before you can get value. What I think is a better way, a smarter way, is this iterative and incremental growth. So in the drawing we saw before where you had the scooter, the bike, and then the car, you can see that the cost is exactly the same, but the risk is a lot smaller. And that risk is kind of a hedged and it's kind of an incremental across the journey. And really what that means is don't build your idea or your business all at once. A great example today of a brand doing this really well is um, a beauty brand. Has anyone read the blog Into the Gloss? I'm seeing some heads nod, cool. Um, has anyone heard of the brand Glossier? Same heads, cool. So what they've done is this was a blog Into the Gloss started by a handful of, or I think it was a couple of um, writers for like Vogue magazine in the US. And what they wanted to do is provide insight to women and men, like everybody in the audience, of what was actually in the bathroom shelves and what products the people in the magazines they wrote about and featured actually used. So it was a really awesome blog and, they, um, it's, and it's still going strong. But what they then did is decided to create a beauty brand on the back of this. Um, that's called Glossier. So instead of waiting, like this version, into creating a full skincare line, a makeup line, and then launching it to everybody, what they actually did is the more iterative model. They launched three products at first, three skincare products, or three or four. Then they launched a handful of makeup products. They've just recently launched a couple more skincare um, products and two extra lipsticks. And what they're able to do is kind of a kind of a grow incrementally, not grow too 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 quickly. Take all the learnings along the way, and not have to spend you know a huge amount of money um, at first, because. Everybody will have a timeline for what they can achieve and in their roadmap. Now, if you have, say, £10,000 worth of like funding or investment or money you've saved up to kind of bring your business to life, and it costs you, say, £1,000 a month to run your business, and even if it's just you on the kitchen table at first, you still need to eat. If you think about the cost it, it takes to build your product, build your website, build your brand experience, to pay to go to meetings, all those small things, um, and say if that costs all in, like a thousand pounds a month, and you've only got 10 grand, then that means your lifeline is about 10 months of your business. And that's a really important number for everybody to create. And it will be different for everybody. Just like everybody here's experience will be quite different. But keep that timeline in your head because that helps inform when you iterate on your strategy and your roadmap. So, for example, if your aspiration was to have, I don't know, say like 10,000 um, Instagram followers in three months um, and it comes to, you know, it's two and a half months in and you have, you know, 500, then you're, you're, 
that's a really late time to iterate on your strategy and figure out a different way to increase those kind of a numbers of like Instagram followers. So for your timeline, you need to think about your timeline in respect to iterating on your strategy. Depending on the amount of time you have, I would always say, it's kind of a like, it's, it's a really common sense approach. If you have 10 months for your business, don't wait to month nine to make a change. Equally, don't do it in month one. Wait and see how it goes. And trust your gut instinct in that, in that process when you're deciding when to iterate, but also look to other things. These other things I would determine as like metrics of success. So you will have to understand what matters for your business and insight into what's happening right now. And that will kind of inform how you iterate your roadmap based on your timeline and what you want to achieve. We'll talk about KPIs later, so I won't go into a huge amount of detail. But what I would say is examples of like metrics that you can use to help you figure out when to tweak your roadmap and like kind of a maneuver your strategy is feedback, customer feedback. Are they using your products in the way you thought they would? Do they like them? Do they not like them? Why don't they like them? Is there a great awareness of what you're doing? If there isn't, how do you expect to generate leads and sales? What are your sales numbers? Are you making money back or are you not? How long can you afford to do that? So you, what I would urge each of you to do when you're doing this, and I it, it's probably not going to crop up today in our workshops, but think about it at home. Think about how many customers you want at each stage, how much awareness do you want of your brand, how much sales you need, and then the leads that kind of uh, will inform those sales. Because you need to understand things like how much it costs to acquire each customer. That's again linked to your timeline. You need a way to understand the people around you. Are they performing well? Are they not performing well? If they're not, why aren't they? Do we then need to sort of iterate the roadmap slightly and iterate that strategy to say, I either need more people in, I need more people now to help kind of build this brand awareness. And also things like customer change. If you had, a, we've talked a lot about subscription services like beauty boxes. If people are buying things once but not becoming loyal customers, why aren't they doing that? And these are all things that will inform the decisions you make in your roadmap. And I appreciate that for everybody, your roadmaps will be different. But um, I can, I'm pretty sure that everyone's going to have to embrace change and iterate on it. And I think that's a really exciting thing to do. It's something where you have to, as a kind of a female CEO, you will have to kind of make those decisions. But they'll be informed by data, by also your gut feel, and kind of a, um, the, the growth of your business. So I wish everyone like massive amounts of luck and we'll be in some of the working sessions to chat anything through.